Sometimes in life you can change one tiny ingredient and end up with drastically unfair consequences. Like in college when I ran out of body soap and I took a shower with dish soap one time. You'd think it's soap, it's all the same thing. Not really true. The same applies for guitar chords. So today we're gonna to talk about the difference between dominant seven chords and major seven chords. We're gonna go over what exactly the difference is between them, some different chord voicings, arpeggio uses for them, and maybe kind of practical ways that you can use them in songwriting or just kind of like uh, just playing in general. So basically, major seven chords and dominant seven chords are both different types of major chords and they're built using the major scale. So for a quick example, let's just take the G major scale, okay? So the notes of G major are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. And this is going to be, this is why like learning chord scale shapes is really, really important. So right here, if I just start with this root note and I go middle pinky index, middle pinky index, ring pinky, I can just take a combination of these notes to make a chord. Now to make a major chord, G major chord, we just take the first, skip the second, take the third, skip the fourth, and the fifth. A one, three, five is a G major. A G, a B, and a D, okay? So, that G major chord is gonna be kind of like our home base for extending, and we're gonna extend this into a major seven chord and a dominant seven chord. Now, the easiest way to do that is to kind of keep that pattern going. Take a note, skip a note, take a note, skip a note, take a note, skip another note, let's skip the sixth note in this key, and grab the seventh note. So I end up with G, B, D, F sharp. Another interesting way uh, that's really helpful to find the seventh note in any key, instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can always just count backwards one half step. Okay, so G is always the seventh note and a key is always right before it. G, B, D, F sharp, all right? That is how you get a major seven chord. Any combination of those four notes will give you a G major seven. We'll talk more about the chord voicings in a minute, but uh, I wanna talk about the difference between that. So if we were to spell that chord out, it would just be a one, three, five, seven. That's what a chord spelling is. It just tells you the notes in the major scale that you need to make that chord. Now, the difference between a G major seven and a G dominant seven is that a G dominant seven has a flat seven, okay? So we'd have a one, a three, a five, and a flat seven, flattening just going one half step down. All right, so the distance between a root note and a dominant seven's seventh note is called a minor seven, like if you play G minor. That interval is what's different about a G dominant seven chord. So, a G major seven chord is just straight up major goodness. <clears throat> a dominant seven chord is a major chord with a minor interval on top of it. That's why when you play a G dominant chord, or any kind of dominant seven chord, you get a little bit of attention because it's kind of like major and minor battling over the same over the same area. All right. Whereas a major seven chord is kind of prettier because you're going through that major scale, having a great time. Beautiful. Okay. Now, uh, different ways we can use this are going to be using these as chord voicings. So, uh, if you think about the the main difference is being. Dominant seven has a flat seven compared to major seven. The exact same four notes, except that seventh note is just flattened one. Then it can really help you out with chord voicings. So let's take a, let's take an easier open position chord voicing, like A major seven chord voicing. It's just open A, two D with your middle finger, one G with your pointer finger, two B with your ring finger, and open E, A major seven. Okay, you might even know, you probably know A major chord voicing. And like we said, if we add that seventh note, sometimes you just have to take the note right before the root note. In this case, your ring finger is on an A, so we make that a major seven. Okay, sounds beautiful. Now here's where that seven was we just talked about. If we flatten that, that just opens up. Okay, so that's just a way to kind of like major, major seven, dominant seven. In fact, that could be kind of like a really cool way to, to kind of use something melodically to get somewhere right there as an example. A major, turn that into an A major seven, turn that into an A dominant seven, and that's always gonna lead you to a one chord, all right? So the interesting thing about a dominant seven chord is it takes you somewhere. So we're gonna learn more about that with these chord voicings, but I wanna kinda go over maybe how to use these chord voicings in different positions, okay? So this is just an open voice of a major seven chord. 
chord. Now we can do the same thing, let's do it in C, where C is a root note. I just took the root note and I moved it one, two, three frets higher, okay? Now, there would be our new major seven chord. This would be like a C major. C major seven, I've got three A, five D, four G, pinky is on five B. Okay, now I can flatten that seven just by lifting it up and making it a bar chord. All right, so there's that dominant seven chord again. And uh, this is where I wanna talk about maybe the uses of a dominant seven chord as compared to a major seven chord and where they exist in the key. Because when you just sit on this dominant seven chord, there's a lot of tension there that's begging to be resolved on the one chord, okay? So it's useful to talk about where this chord exists. And that all comes back to the major scale. So let's go back to G major where we started off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes. Now any of those notes can become chords. The one, four, and five become major chords. One, two, three, four, five. So in the key of G, G major, C major, and D major are all chords that you'll see together a lot. G, C, D. Now if we were to extend those using just the notes in that key, there's a very specific formula that will give us either major seven or dominant seven chords. If you take the seventh note away from G in the key of G, you get a G major seven. That G major turns into a G major seven. A couple different ways you can do that. If you take the seventh note away from C in the G major scale, you end up getting a B, and that turns C into a C major seven. So the one and the four chord in any key can be turned into major seven chords always, without having to worry about going outside of key. It'll always sound pretty good. Now that five, one, two, three, four, five, G, A, B, C, D, the five chord is where the dominant seven chord exists. If you just started on a D, and you played the notes of G major starting on a D, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, and C, the distance between D and C is going to be the same as if you played the D minor scale. That's where that minor seven comes in, that minor seven interval. But since we have a major third there, since it's a major chord, because the five chord in any key is always going to be major, in any major key, it's going to be major, that five chord becomes a dominant seven chord, which might be a, a reason one of the first dominant seven chords you see starting out on a guitar is usually like a D7, because the key of G is a very popular key to play songs in, okay? So the five chord is going to be the most natural place to put that dominant seven extension onto you. And it has a really powerful uh, kind of duty in that key because it always leads you back to the one, all right? It creates that, that tension that needs to be resolved. Okay, so uh, again, that's why in the key of G, G, A, B, C, D, D7 will almost always be followed up by a G major, not always, but in a lot of cases. In the key of C, C, D, E, F, G, a G7 chord will almost always be followed up by a C, and so on and so forth. We could do other uh, keys like the key of F. F, G, A, B flat, C. A C7 will almost always be followed up by an F. All right, so dominant seven chords are a really great chord to kind of start implying some movement, getting some movement in a, in a chord progression, something like that. Now they don't always have to be used in uh, the same key. Uh, one example that I kind of use in my own songwriting is that song Parador, where I have like a like kind of a run of dominant seven chords. Okay, so that's kind of like, I'm starting off with an E7, then I go to a G sharp seven, to an A7, back to a G sharp seven, right? And that just kind of sets up, you know, just maybe like a, a directional thing that's kind of leading me back to uh, like a home base type deal. So I, I personally think that dominant seven chords are a great way to maybe start implying some movement to kind of get a little like, like a pep into like some songwriting. It just kind of adds like a flavor to it that it's very bluesy. Dominant seven chords will be found all over the blues. In fact, you can play a whole blues progression just using dominant seven chords. In fact, something that you'll always see in the blues is like a one, four, five type deal. So uh, like a one, four, five in A would be like an A to a D to an E. Those are just 
power chords. I can turn those all into diamond seven chords. Okay, so even though I'm kind of using notes outside of one particular key, I'm doing it in a bluesy way to go for a certain type of sound that has a little bit of like a tension because of that minor seven rubbing up against a major chord that just kind of gives it a cool sound. Now major seven chords are a personal favorite of mine, and uh, really they can just be used to make absolutely anything prettier. You can turn any major chord into a major seven chord, go outside of a key. You can even turn, why not, just get crazy, turn minor chords into major seven chords. And it always just kind of has like the movement of something kind of like whimsical, mystically beautiful, however you want to use it, right? So just a couple different voicings. It's good to know some different voicings and kind of like how to use them together, stuff like that. Now the last thing I want to do is talk about uh, maybe some arpeggios that you can use to kind of start working these intervals into maybe like a lead type way. So if we go back to A, all right? I'm gonna switch to a three note per string scale type thing because sometimes that can be more helpful in lead. So if we have A major, we have a one, two, three, right? From here to here to a five, a one, three, five, and maybe like a slide way. I'm going from A to this major third, five E to nine. I can even grab that seven on the way. And then I can grab the five right here. One, three, five. And there's that major seven, okay? kind of like a way to start using maybe like a major seven type thing, I can continue on and into like a, a higher octave, something like that. Again, I'm really just taking an A and then I'm adding that uh, major seven chord into it. So if I want to do it again, I can do it right here. This is 70 to 11 D to 9 G straight down. That's just a, a major seven thing. Now I can just alter this to find out where that flat seven is. Right there. To start working on it like some kind of dominant seven idea that you can kind of take from a root note. So major seven, I'm just going from one to a three to a five to a major seven. One, three, five, major seven. Dominant seven, one, three, five, flat seven, one, three, five, flat seven. A lot of different ways that you can start kind of incorporating these in your playing. It's all about knowing the intervals. So in any key, the one and four become major sevens and the five becomes dominant sevens. You can always work those together. Again, in the key of G, we have a progression that's like a one G major seven to a D dominant seven to a C major seven, one, five, four, one. You can also resolve on a major seven chord if you want to, I think it sounds pretty good. If you try resolving on a dominant seven chord, you won't have any friends. That's just kind of like, you know, you gotta, you gotta get some resolution in there. So just wanted to take a minute, maybe clear up the difference between those. It was something that I didn't get right away. And uh, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.